So hello and welcome everyone to this session. First of all, and before I start, I wanted to thank the organizers for giving me this opportunity to speak with you today. So uh, in this session, I'm going to talk about the top tools and techniques used by threat actors and malware. My name is Nsoddin Ben Shashali. Uh, a little bit about me, I am a Windows internals enthusiast, an avid gamer. I write a blog on Medium about InfoSec and malware. Uh, I am in my day-to-day -day job, a security engineer at Elite. So the agenda for today will be as follow. I'll start by talking about the motivation behind this talk and why you should care. I'll introduce some key terms and concepts so that everyone can follow along. Then we'll tackle the subject in question, which is tools and techniques. Then I'll touch briefly on some detection opportunities and I'll share some resources for further reading. So the motivation behind this talk started when a couple of months ago, the, Sol the, the FireEye company released that they were targeted uh, by malware. And that malware turns out to be uh, originating from the solo wind and what, were, what went to become the solo wind breach. A lot of big tank companies and the government agencies were breached. And when I say big, I really do mean it. Uh, let's take an example uh, from the list below. We have FireEye, one of the biggest companies in uh, incident response, Microsoft, Cisco, NVIDIA, VMware, and uh, US agencies such as the Department of Defense, of Commerce, of Energy, and Homeland were all breached. So seeing the list, uh, seeing a list as big as this one, one might uh, suppose that this is a highly sophisticated attack. And it did, it was. Uh, by reading the multiple blog posts describing the techniques and tactics used by the uh, attackers, you can see that this is a highly sophisticated uh, attack. But one blog post in question caught my eye, uh, titled Sunspot and Implant in the Build Process uh, by CrowdStrike, contained very useful information about how the attackers implemented the backdoor in SolarWind itself. Uh, and one phrase or one paragraph in particular uh, caught my attention it goes as follows. The stellar particle operators, which are the operators behind this attack, maintain the persistence of Sunspot by creating a scheduled task set to execute when the host boots. Let's just focus on a, uh, here on a, on a really interesting note. They used a scheduled task. If you are a Windows administrator or a power user by any means, you are already familiar with this utility. For, for anyone else, this utility lets you create tasks to run at certain intervals or a certain time. It is baked in Windows since Windows 95 or so, and uh, it's very often used by administrators. So to imagine that such highly sophisticated attackers uses such uh, simple uh, utility is very interesting indeed. And for that, this gave me the uh, motivation and the idea to do some research. So I went ahead and studied more than 51 reports of the past year uh, published by the different uh, entities, such as FireEye, Red Canary, the Differ report, and the like. And I've studied some malware uh, uh, from hybrid analysis, Hatching.io, Anyrun, and the like. In this presentation, uh, I will be talking about this result. Uh, please note that this research uh, was published as a two-part blog post on my blog, uh, which contain all the details. So this presentation will only focus on some of the tools. So uh, during my research, I have found out that attackers use two types of tools. Uh, the first one are the commercial or the open source type of tools. Uh, these can range from Mimikat, Empire, Bloodhound, Cobalt Strike, etc. On the other hand, they can and they will use uh, Windows utilities such as SetUtil, Rich.exe, PowerShell, etc. And we can classify them as follows. On the left, we have the open source custom commercial tools, and on the right, we have the Windows utilities or living of the land binaries and scripts. Uh, this talk will focus on LOLBAS uh, for these reasons. Because first, first of all, they are already there. Uh, no download is required by the attackers. They are already available on the Windows machine at no additional cost. The second thing is to blend in. Because these utilities, these load bins, are used by the system itself, when an attacker uses them, 
if uh, the analyst that uh, who is analyzing this security incident or the logs is not very familiar of how the system works will not catch uh, the usage of these tools maliciously thirdly because they can bypass application control so briefly application control is as follows let's say you have a system and you will only allow certain application to run so you control these application who can run let's say an attacker will bring mimikatz if uh, you have everything configured uh, well mimikatz will not run but because these utilities are windows utilities and the system will allow with the system will even the system will use them well the administrator is in obligation to allow these tools which in some sense will allow the attacker to use them as well and they provide powerful capabilities for example uh, run dll can be used to dump the lss process uh, before we can continue on uh, the tools and techniques let me introduce two key concepts the first one is the cyber kill chain so in simple terms the cyber kill chain is just the process that attackers usually go through uh, to perform an attack so if, if we start at the beginning but in the external recon uh, the, the attackers will perform external recon to gather information then they will deliver some kind of exploit or malicious script via phishing or some other form and so forth until they reach the data collection part where they see your data and then take action on objectives the second key term, which is very critical in uh, the defensive side, is the MITRE ATT&CK framework. So uh, a definition from the website goes as follows. The MITRE ATT&CK framework is a globally accessible knowledge base of adversary tactics and techniques based on real-world observations. This framework is very uh, important in the defensive or blue team world because it contains a lot of knowledge about the techniques that are currently used by these threat actors and malware and how to mitigate or detect them so if you went to the uh, website of the mitre attack framework you'll be presented with this table that contains all the tactics uh, if you can see that these tactics also can be mapped to the cyber kill chain so we have reconnaissance executions persistence privilege escalation and so forth Let's grab an example to see how this works. So let's say I'm focused on the reconnaissance tactics. Well, in the website, uh, it provides me with a description of the reconnaissance tactics and some of the techniques related to it. So let's say the reconnaissance has some techniques of vulnerability scanning, which is very logical, as in a reconnaissance phase, attacker may launch uh, some, some kind of uh, vulnerability scanning on your system to gather information so they can attack you. Now. What load bands are being used by attackers? Let's get started with a simple one. The first one is the Who Am I utility. Well, it displays user group and privilege information of the user who is currently logged in to the local system. It has a simple command line and command line arguments. It can be used uh, with the slash all to get all the information with the slash groups to get all the groups that the, a particular user belongs to. Now. Uh, these command lines are very often used by administrators to gather information. But on the other hand, attackers are using this in the same fashion to gather the same type of information so they can do some privilege escalation or lateral movement. If we take a look at the uh, cyber kill chain, we can map this to know exactly what in what stage the attackers are on. Uh, in this particular case, they are in the situational awareness. And if we use the MITRE ATT&CK framework to get some information, we'll see that the, uh, the framework tracks these this utility via the following techniques. Now, uh, let's get something more advanced, such as the NL test utility, which is used to, to test network location for domain controllers and get trust information. So it has these particular uh, command line arguments, which are often used by attackers and by administrators. As we can see, the attackers are using it exactly the same way to get information about trust and domain controllers. Once again, we can map this to the cyber kill chain uh, with situational awareness and the MITRE ATT&CK framework also track this with the following techniques. Now, if you remember in the beginning, schedule task was used by the SolarWind attackers. Now, schedule task enables an administrator to create, delete, query, and so forth, uh, some tasks 
on a local or remote computer. Now, uh, a little uh, the, the command line for scheduled task is a little bit more involved than the who am I. Well, you can put some dynamic variables such as the task name, the task, the executable to be run, and the time. And after you execute that, you will get in the interface something like this, the name of the task and, and when it will be executed, who is the author. So, how are attacking using this? Well, to, to no one's surprise, exactly the same way as, a, a, as administrator. If we take a look here, we can see that the attackers are creating and running malicious executables in a persistent manner. That is the reason why they are using this uh, utility because it provides them with a persistent manner to run malicious code. Once again, we can map this to the cyber kill chain and use MITRE to get the, the corresponding technique and get more information. Now, finally, we'll be taking a look at the Rain DLL utility. Well, as the name suggests, it is used to run DLL directly from the command line. Run DLL is a is a, a little hard to follow because its command line only requires you to input the DLL name. Which means to understand what is really happening, you have to know exactly what the LL are being run. And that is the advantage the attackers are using, since this will allow them to run DLL, which can be named any names and then be executed to trick det detection if someone is looking at the logs and seeing the command line without really understanding what is really going on. Once again, this can be mapped to MITRE and the cyber kill chain. So, we've only taken a look at some uh, uh, brief uh, usage of the load bins, but there are many more, as you can see in the following table, such as the Atrib, the DLL host, the iCarcals, and VSS admin. Now, one important question to ask, if you've been following all along, is there any hope to detect this? since the attacker are using the same utilities that the system and administrators are using. And fortunately, there is. Well, if you follow uh, a couple of these uh, advices, I can assure you that you will go far on detecting this kind of attacks. The first one is to always baseline your environment. What do I mean by that? Well, uh, you must know what is being run constantly on your machines. Meaning that if your administrator are using PSExec to administer your environment, well, you should know that and PSExec in this matter is not considered malicious immediately. But in another environment where PSExec is banned, any usage of PSExec will be considered malicious and require some investigation. The second advice is to check command line arguments. Command line arguments are very revealing of the behavior of some utility. For example, SVC host running without command line is very suspicious. But run DLL running with command line is very normal, so you need to check the command line provided to the run DLL utility to understand what's going on. Thirdly, is to get familiar with the MITRE attack framework. The MITRE attack framework is very good. Uh, it contains a lot of techniques that can get you started. It doesn't contain everything, but it can be a very good start to anyone wanting to get into detection and understanding how malware and threat actors are using uh, the different techniques and finally a good healthy knowledge of os internals is a must since the attacker are really using some advanced techniques and some uh, command line uh, command line arguments that are not documented so one must know how the internals of the os works to write good detection and mitigate against this Finally, I'll share some resources that I think you should definitely check out. First is the LoadBus project, which is an amazing project if you are interested in knowing how to use load bins in a malicious way. Second is the MITRE attack framework that we have been talking about during all this presentation. Uh, third is uh, something I didn't mention, but I think that you should check out if you want to write detection, which is the Sigma project, which is a project that contains and introduces a generic format for writing detection rules in CMs. And finally, my own research about this, but uh, I think you should check out if you are interested in learning more. Thank you so much for listening and happy hunting. Follow me on Twitter and here is my blog. Bye.